Hello and welcome to the Spin and Backfist MMA show for April 4th. It is Monday, April 4th as we record this. It is UFC 273 week, a big fight week. We didn't have fights this past weekend. We had fake fights at WrestleMania. I hope nobody got offended by me saying that. I'm saying it out of love. Love real and fake fights. But it's Still me. real it's to Ev, me, damn it. It's Jack Mack. Um, we just did a great interview with Ian Gary that'll be on the show Thursday. And it, it's, a, it's a real good one. One of our best interviews. He's, he's a legend. Yeah. He's the man. Also, I, we did great with, like, it was flowing perfectly. Oh, yeah, we flowed. We were we like, did there's no pause. Three, there's, three, there's, three yeah, man yeah, weave. Yeah, we just yeah. figured out the three-man weave. We, and and was, we do have a three-man weave right here. And it was awesome. I mean, he talked a lot about teamwork, how much he loves his team. We got like we, we need, like, the Barstool MMA camp. We need, like, a cool name for it. Yes, and I think we... we should all get, like, tracksuits and shit made. Yeah. Just I'm travel, all for good tracks. In, in the you face know, of Barstool MMA. all the time, yeah. Would be this guy. Of course. He'll so the be, first yeah. the first thing we have to talk about this week, the biggest MMA news of the week by far, <laughs> the king of MMA, the king of combat sports in general, has Bulla, has done his first interview with Caleb Presley of Barstool Sports. We also have a Hasbulla Barstool merch line that's official. It's a partnership with Hasbulla. So, so he like, gets money. He's getting money from this. If you want to support Big the king bags. himself, don't buy the bootleg stuff. Buy the Hasbulla merch, the official stuff. This interview... 15 minutes long and everything you could ever want it to be. It's it's so rare today that things just live up to the hype and like exceed expectations. It he not hit a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth. Grand slam. I just on it was on everything he's, he was hilarious. He really is I mean he's about that action at any point in time you can <laughs> yeah. catch a, a haymaker. I mean, I love the one when when Caleb was doing the hands with him. He just sneaks in a right sneaks hook, just in stones one to the you. face. Caleb took a ton. Caleb a was talking about shots. the chin on him. We were giving Chris Rock credit. <laughs> Caleb <laughs> taking shots from Hezbollah himself. How I knew it was it lived up to the hype 100 percent was when it was over. I was like, wait, no, no, I want more, I want more, I want yeah, more because yeah. and that that's the sign of a great interview. Because it's amazing. It, There's ten great quotes from it that are already memes all over MMA Twitter. And, and I the think internet. it's I think it's so great that I mean. What I was concerned about and what I think a lot of people were concerned about was, was it going to be lost in translation? Yep. Literally. Yeah. But the the translation being on the bottom makes for such a perfect and easy meme of just like screenshotting it. Does, it does, yeah. And then putting up like that. That's because your brain's not fully developed. Like, I am iron. Um, I am iron was one of the all-time like, quotes. <laughs> I mean, this, like, Hasbulla runs the internet, but this interview ran the internet and is going to, I mean, we're looking at it right now. On YouTube, it's 1.5 million views. That's a little bit delayed. The back end is probably closer to 2 million in 24 hours. Yeah. Who knows how big this could get, especially if there's translations for other countries and whatnot, or other languages and whatnot. It's amazing. Yeah, we should put up a Spanish version, and, a Japanese version. Let's yeah, get every I think language YouTube on will this. Translate do they do the automatic? But you, cool. as Big F said, uh, I think about last we, we week, got a Mr. Mr. Beast, Beast did. Mr. Beast has like Brazil. So he, he literally has his channel in like 20 different countries. <laughs> Mr. That's Beast brilliant. is different. He's, and he's out of control. Shout out he's, ECU, yeah. He's unbelievable. That's what you got to do. The Hezbollah deserves that treatment. And another like sign that this is a truly great video great interview is i feel like every single person you talk to you're like what's your favorite quote and they have a different one he was just i mean he's special like he just it was a quote machine beat the shit out of caleb over the ice cream when he threw the ice cream in the face in the beginning too and then handed him the dude wipe i think blatman said it was like the greatest organic ad of all time for sure i think it actually was like when he's like take the dude wipe like what he doesn't say it but <laughs> it, it gives that mannerism i would have loved to see or and maybe there is clips of this of Caleb or somebody explaining to Hasbro what dude wipes are because <laughs> those probably don't exist in uh, Dagestan. You know they got they wet wipes on the table. Over. Yeah, <laughs> having some ribs in Dagestan. They have wet wipes. I think they have wet wipes, but not dude wipes. But he's uh, not it's dude just, showers. You know, he's like he, he was a meme. Think about how many memes have come and go over the past year. This he really blew up like a year ago today. Yeah. Not today, but around this time. Around right? this time, yeah. and he's. Live, because I remember that that first interview where it's him and Abdu yeah. in that room. But since then, he's sustained. He's sustained the meme. It, that's so it hard. It hasn't died down. It's so hard it's to saying stay. A 15 he's minutes of fame. To, no, no, he's a super forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's, see, honestly, that's the smart of him, like not doing an interview. I don't do an interview for a year. People are like, "What's up with this guy?" And this has only made the allure, like, you think it takes the mystery away. No, this no. only makes it, like, even heightened. People are probably begging him for interviews now. They're oh, like, yeah. oh, he'll do one? But, yeah, I've seen Now he's got to set a price, you know? 
Yeah. Now that he's got price one went up. the belt. Yeah. His the price, price. I mean, Jack he, right, I mean, he wants he, to have a good business. He says that in the interview. Yeah. Yeah. He also said that in English, too. Like, uh, he's like, yeah. business, business. Boom. Boom. I business. love Boom. when they were like, <laughs> Caleb says, do you still carry the blade on you? And he's like, no, I have my brothers now. Yeah. And then I think he like looked at them. He's like, hell yeah. Because he's been famous in his little world yeah. for a while. Yeah. And he's had multiple Khabib's Instagram accounts. Khabib's actually known of him for a while. Like, Khabib yes. and him have had a relationship for, like, two or three years, I think. I remember that video of him running around, like, in the first... When he just throws the hook, yeah. Like, and he was known as Mini Habib. Yep. And nobody, at that point, nobody really knew who he was. And then when that <laughs> video came out with him and Abdu, the famous one, it's like, it's crazy how... It's just it feels so fake, but it's real. It's like look it's at like him. you remember where you were when you saw it that. It's hilarious. We so we were talking about it b- before. He's he's legitimately one of the funnier people I've seen on the internet. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think I can just watch like tapes of him just driving cars all day. <laughs> yeah, he especially with cars. Caleb on just, the inside. His little Caleb. hands just on the huge Mercedes yeah. steering wheel. And he just cats. so focused. Him revving up the car on oh, the cat that's, part. That was great. That's something I was going to say. I think he actually gave me the courage to step out and say that I had cats as a child. Oh, really? You were, you were afraid to say that. I never said it publicly because people. I so wow. it was. It wasn't my choice. My family. We just ha- it like, wasn't your choice. You were born into the house. I was of cats. born into a house. Was ca- we had a cat that was really older than I was. And, so it was there before like I was cat? born. We had our differences. All right. The cats. Uh, we, the cats. We, I was more of a dog guy. I, I was like Kayla myself. I, or not like his. Well, I was a roughhouser, mm. and my dog probably didn't like that very much. Yeah. He was. Are the cats? Or my halal. cat. My cat, cat, cat didn't like it. Cats halal. Dogs are haram, which means like forbidden, not good. Oh, it's really? just within. I was reading up on I it. I didn't know that. That's why. It's probably why he loves cats so much. Cats, for whatever re- reason, in. Islam are is like in a lot of religions we I mean cats like back in Egypt back Egypt, in the day yeah, like they were obviously. like looked at as the like almost the god. the god yeah dogs are seen not like that at all they're haram which means forbidden halal's like good good so Look at this we we were teaching the people about uh, I read up on this middle eastern culture that's cat yeah. versus yeah. dog culture. in the, and I think that's not even just like middle east it's like a lot of a lot of cultures across the world that cats are seen as like from the gods dogs aren't which for the me i'm a dog of, guy but yeah i'm a big dog but guy. he loves that cat man the videos of him with the cat are just adorable he, he loves, loves that, that. barzak yeah, Bar-Zak? yeah. yeah. <laughs> and when he said he just wants to take him to dubai show him around the That's city that. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny he just wants to t- he's like i just want to take him on i walks. hope he gets to take him on walks around the city i'd love i'd love that for the two of them but cats don't like to like leave no I don't you don't think put so. them on leashes no they don't I they don't he like wants it. to yeah I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's get into some other headlines. If you haven't seen the Hezbollah video, it's a must-watch. Pause All-timer. this, go watch it, come back to the podcast. First one, Davis and Figueroa does, no, does not want to fight um, Brandon Moreno no, anymore, no longer. <laughs> he says that Moreno's team made some racist comments, photoshopped a monkey over his face. I did see it. They did. Uh, mm, or at okay, least I saw I a screenshot. Interesting. Um, and he wants to let Dana... Let him, or he wants Dana to let him fight Kai Car France instead. Let me see if I could pull up the, the well, thing. I know it, it, was, it wasn't I know a good in, look. In the tweet, there was a tweet though where he said he wanted to fight Kai Car France, and basically that since Moreno had lost to Pantoja twice, Moreno said him go fight Pantoja, and if he beats Pantoja, then he'll fight him after KKF. That's and we kind of talked about this last time where we were like, why wouldn't he want to fight him? This is the, the picture. That's interesting. That I mean, Moreno's camps uh, obviously. It was like an Instagram filter, I think. Oh. Okay. Obviously, a weird look. So just someone on his team. Someone on his team, yeah. Interesting. I, yeah, it's... And, and he says, like, it, it's fear. Could it mean, like, you're a chicken in some way? But, like, I don't know. When you start messing around with that, do I think it was a malicious racist attack? My gut says probably not. It was probably more of just, like, clowning him, but... It could come off as very racist. Yeah, no, for sure. I, yeah, I, I mean, I would like to think that it's not. I also you I hope think, not. Yeah, I mean, Figueredo, I think it's, I mean, obviously, I think most people at this point would pose that he probably thinks That's KKF from is a. Well, I guess it's resurfaced. Yeah. yeah. See, well, that I think that points more to what I was about to say that. I kind of think he just thinks KKF's an easier like fight. And it looks like it's on Instagram Live. Oh, maybe they did. Oh, there's a couple of them. Oh, he actually. did it a few times. All right, maybe it was racist. I mean, I'm not going to, 
you know. That's interesting. Uh, say that it's from all Brazil, Spanish, right? And yes. Spanish, and Portuguese, then, actually. And yeah. then his Marino's Mexican. Mexican. I don't know the like. Maybe there's a political divide there. Uh, I feel like close. we're. I feel like the three white guys here. Are like yeah, that. I don't you know. know. You know yeah. the picture of the three kids talking around on the table. Yep. It's yeah, like, I have no idea. <laughs> I feel like that's us right now. But I would this. say just never use that filter ever. <laughs> yeah, don't use that filter. Just don't use it. They yeah, should, they should not have. Especially that if another maybe. person like yeah. who. Yeah. Use like a funnier. Use the the one that you open your mouth and a rainbow comes out or something. You know, or Shrek when uh, white socks. Don't Sox use Dave the wants rainbow one, the one with Shrek Sean Strickland though. No, oh, no, no. Yeah, he probably wouldn't like that. Uh, this story is strange. I'll, I'm going to skip this one. Ben Rothwell cut from the UFC. Ben Rothwell had a fight booked, and then they just announced he's no longer on the roster, which I, I you never see that happen, really. No, that was – yeah, I don't think I've – I mean – I don't I think, think I've ever seen time. it. So, like, I'm curious as to did something come up? Did he have an issue with how much he was getting paid? Did UFC just say we would rather put a different fight together? Like, why did this happen? See, because – well, I think my – when they announced the fight initially, Gustafson Rothwell, I was definitely surprised by it for Gustafson. Yeah. yeah. Like, his pedigree is just, I mean, at this point, much higher. He's They're in heavyweight now, but still. two names that have, like, been around forever. I, I, thought, I just like, think, I just, I don't know, I just think of him as just a, I don't know, higher class fighter in terms did of. Did Gus say, I want a better opponent? And then they were like, sorry, maybe. Rothwell, we got nothing he's for been, you. He's been, like, the third smish, bro. Yeah, kind of, yeah. In Sweden, I don't know. It's a weird, I mean. I like Roth. I mean, he, he suffered kind of so a, do I. a the, bad the KO his last laugh, fight. That's a classic. His, if like, you remember, his, his last fight yep. was that weird KO where Herb like literally like stepped in and then like let it go. Oh yeah. And then oh, like, and yeah. then like stepped back in. It was like yeah. a weird. He yeah. kind of like he like couldn't make up his mind. Rothwell seems like he's just made for Bellator though. Yeah. I, oh yeah. Like he's he screams Bellator. He could have a special entrance where it kicks off with his evil laugh and they'll put it on the screen. I mean, he's gonna thrive there. Him versus like Timothy Johnson. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that'll happen. What's his name? Still not cut. Oh, smiling Sam Alvey. Yeah. Yeah. People always. I almost feel bad for him. How much people bring that up every time someone gets cut. They're like. Yeah. Calling for Sam Alvey's job, but yeah, I'm not. You know. I just feel bad on YouTube. I was. They make like the UFC will make a lot of the, uh, the promo videos of like oh like this person's like win streak. Yeah. And I saw one that it was out. Al- it wasn't from the UFC account, but it was Alvey's <laughs> just losing streak. And I was like, oh, damn, oh man. man. And, it, and I felt bad because I I watched it and a few of them were like. Were like clo- that he thought he won, and a few of them he was like really pissed when yeah. he like didn't get the split decision. I think when the last one we fought like Wellington Terman, he was really upset about it. He was literally yelling about the judges in the ring. Oh jeez, in the cage. I mean, that's not so. so the last one he got ever. knocked out, right? I think yeah, he got knocked out by um, Brendan Allen. Yes. Oh yeah. Who was like who's a one uh, who like moved up in weight to fight him? Um, Whitaker and Vittori made for UFC 175. This is a fight we talked about previously a fight that i think we were all like pretty down for i think this is a good one i think it's a fight that makes a lot of sense on like a uh, it's on the like the yuri to share a card yep. okay i think i think shevchenko i think it's uh talia santos is like the it's a good card the co-main so i mean that, that's a fight it's not like the the biggest pay-per-view star so you could use like a big fight like that yeah. as like, the third fight yeah yeah it makes a lot of sense and, and that's one of those cards that like won't catch the eye of all the non-mma fans in the mm. world but is probably going to over deliver and There's be like stars this in the awesome. UFC world. I, know, yeah. I mean, Yuri and Glover is a fa- just fascinating matchup. Totally. On, just on paper, period. Yeah. I mean, Yuri is one of the most fascinating just humans people, alive. Yeah. His whole look, his, his persona. His, like, yeah. his persona, and then, yeah, I, I really want... His knockouts. <laughs> yeah, he waited so long to get in the UFC, and then just... Not, like, it's like a shaman, too. It's highlight like, real sleeps, too, like top contenders. That's he, crazy. But he just like goes out there with his chin out. Like I don't know how... He does. It's. I'm really interested to see what. The, but is Glover the kind of guy that's gonna like, you know, you just take him sleep down. him right away because he's got his chin out? Like I don't know. He will take him down. He'll take yeah. his neck. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to see sure. Glover get a title defense. I'll be under curious his belt. to see what the odds are on that fight. I think it's like minus. Is it is already? Yeah. On, for not Yuri, on, not on ours, but I think Yuri's favor. I figured he would be. But I think Teixeira will be a good bet there. I don't know. I love Glover Teixeira. He trains in Connecticut. Connecticut yeah, yeah. Just Connecticut boy. Yeah. Like that. He, and then he brought Perea there. He's been coaching a lot, yeah, like doing and, a lot of cornering. And a lot of cornering. And Danbury, Connecticut, which is just like, for someone who grew up in Connecticut. <laughs> Wait, is that where the, the trashers are yes, from? Yes, yes. Oh. It's, it's a, it's a, I mean, Danbury's fine, but it's just like, oh, <laughs> the heavy, our light heavyweight champion of the world trains in trains in Danbury, yeah. Connecticut. It's like, yeah. what? Yeah. Obviously, he's Brazilian. Shout out to him and Triple H. 
Yes. Connecticut Legends. <laughs> yes, right. Triple, Triple H, H is just, from uh, yeah. Greenwich, Connecticut. Bill's from Greenwich, Connecticut. Yeah. Um, John Jones says he expects to be in peak physical condition in June, July. I believe that's what also all women say. Yes. Uh, they, men beach, too. Beach pod. Yeah, men men as well, but men aren't as, you know, I feel like men are kind of just like, it's bulking season all the time, brother. That is true. That's right. <laughs> that's how I picture <laughs> men. Uh, <laughs> June, July, he said? June, right. July, yeah. That tweet he had like two months ago, I mean, I don't really feel bad for John Jones because I think a lot of his problems have come up because of his bad decisions, poor yeah. decisions. But he was like the one who was like, congrats to all my haters. I'm down. I'm down tremendous right now. Like, <laughs> like you guys won because his wife left him. I I'm mean, a big hater. I think that is dub. Yeah, no, dub I'm not. Yeah. Column. I'm not. I, I don't. I like John Jones in the UFC in terms of just being. What? He's a heel kind of. Did you see of? his tweets at Dan Hooker over the Chael Sonnen thing? No. no. He tweeted Dan Hooker and he was like, "Hey, you always call me out for my shit. Like, you better be calling out Chael Sonnen. What do you think about this?" Oh, I Dan did H- see that. Dan actually. Hooker was just like, "Bro, what the fuck does that mean? I think you're both pieces of shit." Like, okay. Yeah. No. I mean, he's like, he's doing domestic violence too, maybe allegedly. Yeah. Did he run, like hit some? The hit Chael a stuff is also like so weird. So weird. Charges are getting dropped. The felony charges getting bumped down to misdemeanors, misdemeanors, which is much better for him. Much better for him. But the story still seems very strange. And the police report, like his wife, he was you know very not aware of what happened. I don't know. Bruised up. There's a lot of a lot of said, a lot of strange, 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 strange stories around that. Yeah. Hopefully they. Hopefully we find out the the truth soon. Hopefully that. You know, it's nowhere near as bad as they're making it out to seem because you would like you would like to hope not. Yeah, it the, it does make me feel okay that it's being dropped to misdemeanors. Misdemeanors compared to felonies, it's like a misdemeanor is like a slap on the wrist kind of. But yeah. he has a bunch. I don't know. I yeah, it's like we'll see. I guess we still don't have facts, so should, we shouldn't totally speak on it. All right, we are back. We are Jack Mackless because we had to swap around the rooms a little bit. I think overall, thanks to Dave Portnoy. So you could have him to blame for all this. No, not really, but kind of. He recorded his podcast a little early, so we swapped around. We're going to finish out with a few more headlines. And then we're going to talk about the pound-for-pound pound rankings, one of the most controversial topics in all of MMA. Something that we've talked about a little bit, touched on, but we're going to kind of go through them, talk about it like that. The first headline... I think we should talk about is this video from Aljamain Sterling, the MMA rule book for dummies video he put out. I think they filmed it at, they had to film it at Longo Serra MMA. And it's a pretty funny video. I know that, I think Jack Mack doesn't like Aljamain Sterling. So if we had him, he would probably offer the opposing side. But I think we're both Sterling guys. Yeah, I, so I, I kind of feel bad for Sterling and all this because I think he's kind of had to eat all the shit from yeah. the ramifications of it where. The one thing that I think no one, like, listen, he's, he got a lot of shit for about, like, posing with the bell, and then now people are kind of attacking him, and then he kind of started really leaning into it. People really didn't like that. Yeah. I don't, I, I think the one thing that people are just, like, forgetting is that Peter Yan is an idiot for throwing that knee. Totally. I think I think that's the one thing that no one kind of, like, they just gave him a pass on Remember that. Remember when we, Greg Hardy threw the knee, and we all celebrated it as, like, what an idiot. He's the worst. Like, that's just proof. And then Yan does it, and it was all on Sterling. Now, do you believe, did he fake it? Did he not? Who knows? But it's, like, the knee itself and posing with the title that night, as we've talked about off mic, I don't think that was his fault in any way. Like, I think the way it was described was that he's at a party with his friends. He's feeling down because he just got kneed in the head, and that's not how you want to fight to go, even if you do win the title. And his friends were like, put the title on. Come on, take a picture. Don't be so down. This is a good night. Let's celebrate. Took a picture, and someone made the mistake of posting that picture. They, because even in the, I don't know if you've watched the countdown yet. I haven't, no. They kind of used it like very, there was a clip of him of, I forget who it was. Somebody else. They were kind of him and another guy together, and they were like unzipping like the bag that yeah. the belt comes in, and then him just got kind of posing with. They almost kind of set him up a little bit. Like they made him look like he was really like flexing the belt. Damn. Even in the countdown, but they kind of have to. That's how you're gonna sell the fight. I don't mind the video. I just think it's about time he like did a little something. To fight. Like he had been fighting back on social media. It just kind of wasn't working. And going back, I said I feel bad for the guy because I think 
coming into that fight, he was like a big fan favorite. Yeah. And then he just lost it all like that. It's crazy, too. And it's like he leaned into it, but at first he didn't. So it was like a little back and forth. And then it was like people didn't know how to react to him leaning into it or not. So he just got, it felt like 90% negative, maybe 10% positive. And it's like he's going into this a huge heel. He's going to get booed when he comes out. For sure. Absolutely. And it's kind of what you said. Like, I think he came in, like, he came into a fan favorite and then. I think it got to a point where he had told his story a few times, but like that at this point, like even on the yeah. biggest shows, the Hawani, whatever, like it doesn't matter. Once the public grabs their like narrative, yeah, you can Perception tell the story. Reality. That's what it is. Like it's just that's just kind of what it is now. Like he's the guy who's like repping the bell, even though he lo- won on a DQ. Yeah, we can get it. We'll get into the fight. I'm sure. Obviously, like more like Thursday. I think he's going to put up a bigger fight, a better fight than people think. I'll leave it at I that I think so, for now, too. Though. Billy Q is swearing that he's going to pull off the upset. Now, Billy Q, obviously, a little biased because he trains with the Sarah Longo guys pretty often, but he's he's called a few upsets before. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll get in the well, – obviously, we'll get into it next week. So, I think, like I said, I'll leave it at that. I think he's going to do better than people think. Did you see – this is, like, one other kind of tiny headline. The clip of someone asking Brian Stan about Kamzat – four years ago before he ever yes, had a fight. Yes, I did see it. I he saw it literally today, actually. never had a fight, and someone walked up, I think it was in Sweden, at a Q&A press conference type thing, and they were like, what do you think about this like upcoming fighter that is going to rise through the ranks, like Kamzat Chemaev? And Brian Stan, I, I think he was like, I don't know who that is, but best of luck to him or whatever. And yeah, four years ago, before he ever had a fight, he was already getting hyped. It was, I think, the timeline, I think it was like he made that statement in like June 2017. His first ever MMA fight, professional, was September 2017. That's crazy. But there was he hopped they, right in. Well, the guy was saying he just was like competing. I'm, I would imagine he was talking about like Gustafins and guys like that. Like he was yeah. saying he was competing with their like top guys. Yeah. <laughs> and mean, Gustafin's the best guy that they have there. And you hear prior that. To him, like, I believe, you hear those so. like Jim Warrior stories about so many that like don't pan out. Like I hate to say it because he's from my town, but Philip Hawes. We heard mm. like he's hanging with John Jones. He's John Jones' hardest sparring partner. And then like he's struggled every time he's been, not every time, but a lot of the time that he's been put in a spotlight. But yeah. it's like shit. That must be also horrible to deal with as a fighter. If you're going into the gym and like dominating John Jones in wrestling, and then you go to the big stage and you just like lose a split decision, that sucks. Yeah, it's like, that's like that's the worst thing that happened to you as a fighter. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, Pete Davidson told his joke in a stand about how Ariana Grande saying it a huge dick was the worst thing that ever happened to him. <laughs> yeah, because now every woman that sees his penis is expecting like the most enormous thing they've ever yeah. seen. You can't. Like, it's it's tough, slightly above average. Yeah, it's, it's, Come tough, on. it's tough to live up to expectations. Yeah, it is. Now let's talk about the pound for pound rankings. Talking about living up to expectations. Another thing that's hard to live up to when you're named number one pound for pound, everyone's gunning after you. Right now, pound for pound king, Kamaru Usman. I don't think Connor likes that very much, but looking at this list, I think he belongs there. I, I don't I don't think you'd really make an argument for anyone else right yeah. now. At least in terms of like their body of work. Like you can make yeah. an argument in terms of like you think they're this good, but in terms of like what they've accomplished he in the has ring, the resume to back it up in the octagon to this point, like I don't, I mean he's he's now he's lapping, he's kind of lapping the competition. Back to back, Colby he's fights. He's never yeah. lost in the UFC. Crazy. Beat Leon Edwards already. He's going to have the next challenge, and I think he's going to beat Leon Edwards again. Yeah. Now, comes out the guy we we're talking about is the one where it's like, damn, is he is he the guy that could end this year? We were talking about this a little earlier too. Like, who's going to end the year champ? Is it going to be Chimaev? It's funny because I've even already been seeing Uz- Usman. I'm not going to accuse him of ducking. I don't know if you've heard some comments about him, excuse me, kind of being already like basically saying he's already kind of looking towards retirement and that he doesn't know how many fights he has left. And kind of like, if he's there when I'm still there, we'll see. Like to me, he it almost sort of hinting it at almost that felt a few like he, ago, It almost felt like he was setting it up to like leave before he fights him, which would. Really suck. That that'd would be, be a that'd be what really if. annoying. Yeah, that would be a what if we always wondered about. I almost think that would be like unchampion of him to not it, like if if Hamzat beats Burns, you got it. He almost it. he like has to fight. Yeah, him. yeah. I mean, Dana would probably unload a truck full of money just to make sure we don't have another champ like walk away with the title and leave it because that's always like it's just a little annoying for sure. No, it'd be and especially like if Hams like we've talked about like if Hamzat it like looks his price against yeah. Gilbert and he just runs through Gilbert. You have to fight him. You have can't. You can't leave. Fight. You can't leave and not fight that guy. Yeah. Number two and three on the list: Israel Adesanya and Alexander Volkanovsky. Some guys from down under. I think these are also good picks. Now the next pick is the one where I, I start to go. All right, I don't know what the pound for pound rankings are because the next pick is Francis Ngannou, and I love Francis Ngannou. But when we're talking about pound for pound best fighters, mm. 
I feel like there's other people on this list that are more well-rounded in MMA, like a Davison Figueredo type or a Dustin Poirier type or a John Jones type, who are all later on this list. John Jones listed at seven. Uh, even Charles Oliveira at five, Max Holloway at six, are more well-rounded in the cage than Francis Ngannou. But he's got the wins. He's got the knockout power. So I guess you put him there. That's where the pound-for-pound pound gets confusing. Yeah, I wouldn't have been four. I, it was, I think it's basically the only name you didn't mention we just talked about before. I think Peter Jan's probably the most disrespected on the list. He's nine. Nine. Below Poirier, Jones, Holloway, Oliveira, Nganu, Volkanovsky, Adesanya. Now, these are all great fighters, but I agree. Like, Jan should probably be. Po- like, Poirier, Poirier being in front of him, I think, is crazy. Like, maybe even After you Holloway just lost the belt point, in I your love weight Holloway, class. but is, does Holloway belong above Jan pound for pound Probably, right now? It, Probably not. I mean, it's... Holloway, it's tough because, I mean, the fight, I don't think the second fight with Volkanovski was as big as a robbery as people talk about. I think it was like yeah. a, a coin flippish I think fight so too. that just went the other way. I agreed. Like I, like, I think a robbery is, robbery to me is like you clearly won. I don't yeah. think it was like clear, That's the most clear. overused term in MMA is robbery. Whenever like there's a split decision that doesn't go the way people probably bet online, they're like, it was a robbery. I don't think that's the case either. No, not at all. Vol- See, Volkanovski probably, like he... Holloway being that high in the most thing is part of Volkanovski. Like, I mean, he's he's never lost a fight in any organization at this weight class. Yeah, it's crazy. He lo- his only loss was welterweight when he was when he was back in his rugby days. He was like over two hundred pounds, still making his way. And he down. was kind of just starting down. He like yeah. lost the fight in I think at welterweight. That's crazy. So he's literally undefeated in the weight class. I am excited to see him fight. And if he wins the fight, there's a chance we're going to get him in studio. That would be incredible. That'd be really cool. Love I think there's the a chance we get him next week in studio with the belt. Now, at the same time, if he loses, Korean Zombie being the champ would be pretty fucking awesome. That would be awesome. It's obviously we'll talk about all this on Thursday, but him, the the I think Volkanovski is even minus like seven thousand five hundred eight hundred right now. Oh my god! Insane. That, that's an incredibly a high price. Zombie just at those crazy odds. Zombie and by I mean knockout. he's he's training with fucking Triple C. As much as people don't yeah. like him, he's been training winners. Yeah. The guy's a good coach. He knows what the fuck he's doing. Some other people on this list rounding out 10 through 15. Glover Teixeira at 10. Davis and Figueredo at 11. Stipe Miocic at 12. Brandon Moreno at 13. Robert Whitaker at 14. And Jan Blanchowicz at 15. I think Figueredo should be higher. I don't think Jan should be on the list. Jan? Oh, Bl- Jan. Blahovic, Blahovic. Yeah, yeah, Blahovic. Blahovic. Yeah, yeah. Blahovic. I know. Uh, I don't think he I know, should be I on the list. Say that name. I always throw an N into that name that I don't think belongs there. Is there an N in there? No, there's not. I always throw an N even, into that name. Even Stipe at this point, I don't know if he belongs on the list. I was thinking that. I love Stipe. I, I think don't it's tough. Know. Just the the fashion he was knocked out in is tough to who, who be would, pound who, for pound. Who would you put on that list that belongs there and isn't there? Islam. Well, I'll say it, yeah, Islam probably should be up there. Michael Chandler even is number five in lightweight. It's tough to put him up there, but I not because nah, then Gaethje would have to be before him. And True, Gaethje's okay, not yeah, on there. Yeah, Gaethje's I think my the biggest takeaway is Figueredo and Peter Jan should be much higher. Then there's a few guys at the end that I think I'd probably disagree with, like like we just said. Like Glover deserves to be there because he's the champ. I don't know like how high. Yeah. Just in the top fifteen is probably fine with me, but Yeah. It's that's tough. I'm looking at the women's pound for pound rankings now. I feel like Valentina. Valentina's number one. Nunez is number two. Rose number three. Juliana Pena, number four. Wiley Zhang, number five. I feel like those are pretty good. See, to me, it's still, like, disrespectful. Like, if you lose if you lose to somebody, you should get their spot. Yeah, Amanda Nunez above Juliana Pena and is they've a only, strange. And they only fought once, so it's not like they're, yeah. like, 1-1. One, one. Like, they're, she's 1-0 that, against They her. should probably flip. Like, she deserve, to me, she deserves that spot. That's why I, I would th- also probably put, I would probably do Shevchenko, Pena, Nunez, Nama Yunus after that. Fair, yeah. And I love Rose. That's not a if not Rose, a yeah. If Rose beats Esparza, yeah, then she has a case to be like two, three. But if we're calling Nunez the the women's goat, you know, a lot of people will call for her for sure. That. She, I mean, she still her, deserves like, that. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, she still is uh, reputation and experience wise the goat. But and opinion wins again. I would love to see Valentina fight her. Yeah, it'd be great. She wants the uh, Pena wants that uh, win back. Because Valentina fought her before mm-hmm. we got the win over. That would be awesome. When I interviewed her, she was, like, pretty insistent on that. She's another one where we got her recently on a talent list. Um, I think the beginning of May she's going to be promoting the Ultimate Fighter against Oh, Nunez, that'd be so awesome. hopefully we'll get her in She's studio. great. Yeah. That'd be a great interview as well. Caitlin Chukagian is actually in the women's pound-for-pound pound, uh, rankings, which shout-out to Caitlin Chukagian. She's fighting soon, isn't First she? She's at a fight announced, I, think, I believe. I think so. I forget uh, who was Someone definitely against. just called her out recently. She definitely just had a fight announced. I'm, like, 95% sure. I can't remember who though. 
I want to say it was sometime maybe in like in like May she was going to fight or something like that. Her last fight was not too long ago. Let's see her Wikipedia if she's got something on there. Yeah, Amanda Rebus. There it is. Okay. May 14th. There you go. So That's, we add uh, the, the fight after the pay-per-view. I think uh, May 14th is actually the day I become a godfather. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big got deal. got a goddaughter. I know. I want to make like a poster of me as fucking, you come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding. What's his name? Marlon Brando. What does he play in The Godfather? Corleone? No, he no. Brando is uh, Brando's the Don. Are you Don? I'm, I'm not a yes, Godfather yes. guy. I've tried to make it through that movie and I can't. Yeah, Brand, Brando's the Don. Yeah, I'm one of those guys that thinks it's boring. I know people look down on me. They're like, you're. No, nah, it's. I mean, it has I, nah, probably I mean, it's probably because your brain isn't fully developed yet. Nah, but like a guy like me, like I'm like, give me Goodfellas, give me like yeah. Bron- Bronx Tale. Goodfellas like, is one of my favorite movies. They're of all a better. Time. They're they're a better watch. There's a great Family Guy clip where. Uh, I think all of the Griffins are in like a safe room that starts to flood, and they all think they're they're about to die, so they start naming secrets. And Peter's like, "I don't like the Godfather," and everyone's like, "What?" And he's like, "Lois, it insists upon itself, Lois. It just insists. I don't like it at all." And they're like, "That doesn't it doesn't even make sense, Peter." Like they're so disgusted, but <laughs> it's a great clip, and that's how I feel about it. So that was the uh, Spin and Backfist MMA show for today. A bit of a shorter show, but there was no fights to recap, so. That'll happen, and we'll be back with a longer show with the recap, an interview with Ian, Gary, and all of that on Thursday. Can't wait for that. It's going to be a great weekend of fights, and we're going to win another Spin and Backfist Parlay. I'm going to have a lot of plays. A lot of plays. A lot of plays. Awesome. Can't wait.